Good day and thank you for joining us. So in the past we've looked at straight line functions, parabola functions and today we'll be looking at the exponential function. So let's start off by looking at some equations and properties of these graphs. So firstly for this example here on the top it is represented by the equation of y is equal to a times b to the power of x. So in this equation, a over here will represent my y-intercept. Cool. So in the specific example and in this equation, a is representing my y-intercept. Then also a new word for you is that an asymptote. So what an asymptote is, is basically like a limit for the exponential function. So, we're going to write that out quickly. It's an asymptote. Cool. And in this specific example, the asymptote is represented by the x-axis. Where y is equal to 0. Cool. So the asymptote is the limit of this graph and basically the exponential function will never touch the asymptote. Moving on now to this next graph over here, this exponential function is represented by the equation y is equal to a times b to the power of x plus q. So we are familiar with a already and now what is new is q. So what is q? Well, what we need to know is that the graph is moved q units up, sorry that's my bad, up or down. Cool. So basically q is our new asymptote. So the asymptote is now represented by the value of q. So where y is equal to q. And basically what this means is that if our asymptote is, let's say, q is equal to 1, and in this case here q is equal to 1, the exponential graph will never touch this line over here. And remember that q is always represented by a y value. So on the y axis at 1, the graph will never touch this line. Okay, and also when q is equal to 1, that basically means that the graph has shifted one position up. And it can also be shifted down where you could even have q equal to negative 1, where it is below over here. And the graph will never touch that asymptote at the bottom as well. So those are the most important things that we need to know about these exponential functions. Is that here in this example where the x-axis is our asymptote, the equation is y is equal to a times b to the power of x. And where y is equal to a times b to the power of x plus q, our asymptote is represented on the y-axis with an actual value that is not 0. Cool. So let's move on to some examples of plotting. So right here we'll be looking at the table method of plotting. And immediately what you can see is that this is the first equation that we looked at, correct? This is the one where the asymptote is the x-axis. So what you need to know is that these graphs will never touch the x-axis. They'll get as close as they can, but they will not touch it. So we set up our table here already. We have x on the top, y at the bottom, and we can put in standard values of negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So to find out what these y values are, we'll substitute our values into the equation. So our x values into the equation will look like negative 2 times 2 to the power of First, that's a negative 1. Cool, so we know that this is going to be y times negative 2 times. So remember, anything to the power of a negative turns into a fraction, right? So this will be a half. And we'll keep the same power, but because it's the power of 1, we don't have to include that. So y in this case is going to be equal to negative 1. Cool. Moving on, now we'll do y is equal to minus 2 times 2 to the power of 0. 
So we know that anything to the power of 0 will give us 1, so that's minus 2 times 1 which gives me minus 2. So very important thing to note, where x is equal to 0, that is going to be our y-intercept of the graph. So as soon as we find this, we can already plot it onto our graph. So that is x is equal to 0, so it's on the y-axis, and it is at negative 2. So that is going to be over here somewhere on the y-axis. Cool. So we can just indicate that that is negative 2. And then we'll do the last value, which is y is equal to minus 2 times 2 to the power of 1. So 2 to the power of 1 will give me 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4. So we can put that value in now. It's at negative 4. So we can plot this now. It is at x is 1 and y is negative 4. So x is 1, y is negative 4 will be somewhere over there. And so straight away we can start to plot this graph once we write in that this is 1 and negative 4. You'll note that I didn't include the negative 1 and negative 1. That is because I don't need to. What I tend to do is plot whatever the y-intercept is and then whatever is paired with the x value of 1. So what I can do now is start over here as close to the x-axis as I can get and make sure that I go through both of these points that I found and plotted. And just like that we've drawn the exponential function over here. So remember it gets as close as it can to the x-axis but it will never touch it which and then it will start to move away through its two points and then come down like that. Moving on now we have y is equal to minus 3 to the power of x. So we'll follow the same procedure we will substitute the x value into this equation we get y is equal to minus 3 to the power of negative 1. That is obviously going to be 1 over minus 3, or that minus 3 can just be in front of the fraction, so it's basically negative a third. And then we have, we'll just put that in here, negative a third. Then we'll use 0, which is y is equal to minus 3 to the power of 0. So where we have anything to the power of 0, we know that that's equal to 1, so this will be left as negative 1. So we'll put that there into our table. And now we'll use the x value of 1 now. So this is y is equal to minus 3x to the power of 1. It's going to give us y is equal to minus 3. So we, now we can go ahead and plot this 0 and negative 1. That's going to be down over here. That's 0 and negative 1. And then as well as 1 and negative 3. So that will be somewhere down over here. Remember, none of these sketches are to scale. Let's just indicate to them this is 1 and negative 3. So remember we start as close to the x-axis as we can. We start to move away as we pass through both of our points that we plotted. And then we can put in our adders as well. And just like that we finish plotting both of these exponential functions with the help of our table method. So now moving on we're going to look at a different method which is the intercept method which can only be used when we have asymptotes involved. Cool, so we'll be looking now at our intercept method. And I'll say it once more, only to be used when there are asymptotes involved. So, remember when we're trying to find any intercepts, the x or the y intercepts, we are making the opposite one equal zero. So if we're trying to find the x intercept, we're gonna make the y, y equal zero. And if we're trying to find the y intercept, we make x equal zero. So let's start off by finding the sorry, let's start off by finding the y intercept in this one. So y intercept make x equal zero. So this is going to be y is equal to two to the power of zero minus one. So we know that one minus one will give us zero again. And now moving on to finding our x-intercept. If we find the x-intercept, we make y equal 0. So this will be 0 is equal to 2 to the power of x minus 1. We'll take the 1 over. This becomes 1 is equal to 2 to the power of x. So
So this method involves using the intercept method which only is used when we are dealing with examples with asymptotes. In some cases you may, may not be able to find the answer so in that case you'd have to go back to the table method because even these examples with asymptotes you can use in the table method. Okay? The intercept method might just be a bit simpler in some of them but in cases where you're unable to find the answer make sure that you fall back onto the table method. So to find the x the y intercept first we're going to make x equal 0. So we're going to go y intercept. To find that we need to make x equal 0. Cool. So let's do that. We get y is equal to 5 times 5. We're making x equal 0. So this will be 0 up here minus 1 and so y is going to be equal to so 5 times so remember anything to the power of 0 is 1 so that's 5 times 1 gives me 5 minus 1 gives me 4 so right there we have the y intercept so we can write that as 0 and 4 then moving on we get the x intercept we have to make y equal 0 so that will be 0 is equal to 5 times 5 neg to the power of negative x minus 1. We take that in the minus 1 over, it becomes positive. We have 5 times 5 to the negative x. So now we still need to get 5 to the negative x alone. So what we have to do is divide by 5 on both sides. That will cancel there. And so we're left with 1 over 5 is equal to 5 to the power of negative x. So now remember the next point is that we need to make the bases the same on both sides. But in the same doing that we can't change the value of the side, right? So if I make this side to the value of 5, I need to still keep it at the same value of a fifth. Okay? So I have the base of 5. How can I make a base of 5 equal a fifth? So if you can recall, if anything is to the power of a negative, it changes to a fraction. Cool. So if we can make this 5 to the power of negative 1, it will still equal to a fifth. So in this way, we've changed the base to being the same, but we've kept the value of the side the same still. And so from this point, once the bases are the same, we know that the bases will fall away. And so what's left over is minus 1 is equal to minus x. So x is going to be equal to 1. And in this case, we can write out our coordinates of 1 and 0 as our x-intercept. So let's go ahead and plot that onto our graph right now. Firstly, paying attention to the fact that the asymptote, so we'll write here asymptote or q, is equal to negative 1. So we'll find where negative 1 is on the graph. Let's say it's over there. Then we will draw in our dashed line, obviously using a ruler. And we'll say that this is, you can say it's your asymptote, which is equal to negative 1. Or you can just indicate that this point on the graph is negative 1. Cool. Now we can put in 0 and 4, so that's 0 on the x-axis. and Obviously, it's our y-intercept, so that's going to be 4 over there. And then 1 and 0, which will be over there. So, our graph will start here, and it will start inclining upwards through the points that we found. Sorry, this is going to be a bit scrappy. It's going to come up, and it's going to go through like that over there. Cool. So, that is this exponential graph thrown out here. It's a bit easy to do on a page but I did my best. Moving on to number two once again we are going to use the intercept method so we're going to find the y intercept first. Let me just make my pen a bit smaller so I can fit more of this in. So y intercept first so we make x equal to zero. So let's do that. It's y is equal to two times three to the power of zero minus eighteen so that will be 2 times 1. 2 times 1 gives me 2. Minus 18 gives me minus 16. So therefore that y intercept is going to be 0 and negative 16. 
Now we're finding our x-intercept. We make y equal 0. Sorry. Make y equal to 0. So that's going to be 0 is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of x minus 18. 18 goes over becomes positive. We have 2 times 3 to the power of x. Divide by 2 both sides to get 3 over 3 to the power of x by itself. So we're dividing by 2. So we get 9 is equal to 3 to the power of x. Now we need to make the bases the same. So the base is the same here as is on the other side. And how can we keep 3 the same value as 9? We can say 3 squared. Correct? Because 3 squared still equals 9. So in that way, bases were made the same, but the value did not change. And so this will give us our final answer of x is equal to 2. Because remember, those bases fall away. Okay, and then we can write our x coordinate of 2 and 0. Don't forget, indicate that q is equal to minus 18. And so now we'll go to our graph here. We'll find minus 18 probably somewhere way at the bottom. Indicate that's minus 18. And then draw in your asymptote with your ruler. A dashed line going on like this. Or you can say asymptote is equal to negative 18. Cool. Let's go ahead and plot. We have 0 and negative 16. That will probably be somewhere over here. We'll say that's negative 16. And then we have 2 and 0, which is over here somewhere. Cool. We'll say that's 2. And so then the graph will come up, go through the points that we found. And oops. <laughs> From this point, carries on going up until it passes through the 2 and then we add in our arrows also as you can see what I did in the second example that I didn't do in the first is that I should have plotted my points over here and indicated what these points are so I would have said here that this is 4 and this is 1 cool as you can see I drew in 2 and minus 16 and so just like that I finished that example so I finished plotting both of these exponential graphs by using the intercept method which we only apply with asymptotes and remember if you do this method and you are unable to find the answer or you meet a hiccup anywhere fall back on your table method as you can use your table method to plot any equation awesome so thank you for joining me guys I hope that this lesson has helped you to learn how to plot your exponential functions have a good one